When you're on the cocaine, everything is good. You feel, you feel strong. You feel, you feel um, okay. When I don't use it, I feel depressed. South America, made from the coca plant, from the leaves of the coca plant. These are, are copies of the laws that I helped write in 1984. 1986 and 1988, very harsh laws. Th those particular provisions came right out of my word processor. I gave them to the members of Congress, and they debated them and adopted them. Um, provisions dealing with money laundering, with uh, the, the powers of the Drug Enforcement Administration, with other many other law enforcement agencies. And I was uh, the counsel to the House Committee on the Judiciary who was principally responsible for the drug portions of these laws. Tough laws that are adopted for political purposes or by countries like Bolivia to satisfy the demands of American politicians and the U.S. State Department. What American goes to Bolivia and says, show me the people, show me their crimes? They simply pick up a report. The Bolivian government says, uh, you know, we arrested you know, 700 major traffickers last year. That's great, Minister. Terrific. We applaud the hard work that you're doing. You know, how can we do more to help you? It is a fraud there, just as it's a fraud estamos como una sardina que se pudiera decir no nos da nada de limpieza por eso varias enfermedades como estamos en un montón no podemos aguantar nos contagiamos con diferentes enfermedades que acá no nos sucede no hay centros de, de salud que nos puede cooperar o sea totalmente estamos abandonados acá people who really make the most money out of this. They know who they are. They know where they live. They know how to get that. Uh, it's much easier for them to round up the little people uh, at the lowest level. And they can go back and say, oh, look at look at the numbers of people we've locked up. Look, look at the number of people we've arrested. Look at the number of uh, the hectares of coca we've eradicated. And they go back, and Congress gives them the budget. And they give them more money every year. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> Thank 
centuries on the lower slopes of the Andes. Coca leaves are ready to predict the future. To combat hunger and fatigue, as coca is an extremely rich source of vitamins, minerals, and protein. It's offered to the gods and used to cure the sick. Sí, the culture of Inca. Desde antes de tiempo, Tatar Abelio está trabajando tiempo. Día y noche está hablando de Cuca. Cisco, Camama, César. Todas como madre, todas mantienen los mis hijos. O sea, todo esto se mantiene la Cuca, Cuca Mama. The artificial increase of the coca crops started with the first industrial use of leaves by the Coca-Cola Company, and the government started buying harvests. Later came the demand for drug trafficking. Bolivia and Peru came to have enormous coca fields to supply that demand. <laughs> Otras personas hacen cocaína, por eso estás trabajando, o sea, por eso estás como una garganta, pero nosotros campesinos no saben elaborar cocaína, no sé cómo será. que la intervención está a cargo de la Fuerza Especial de Lucha contra el narcotráfico y en las áreas rurales a través del UMOPAR, que somos nosotros, la unidad policial eh, especializada en selva. Dentro de los patrullajes nosotros eh, tenemos programado en encontrar eh, fábricas de cocaína en la selva. Estamos en el punto exacto ahora de las coordenadas que nos han dado las, los satélites y en este caso la DEA, y no se ha podido ubicar las cosas. Toda esta zona, de acuerdo a la línea que es considerada zona roja, zona de narcotráfico, lamentablemente todos los ciudadanos que están en tránsito por acá tienen que someterse nomás a la revisión. Bueno, ¿por dónde estoy? Se han escapado, se han internado a la selva, ¿ya? Entonces es muy difícil para poder escapularlos. Nosotros vamos a incinerar destrucción total y incineración total. 
una fábrica no es eterna se puede estar en un punto X y fabrica unos 15, 20 kilos o más y posteriormente se muda hacia otro lugar esto también lo hacen por razones de seguridad no están permanentemente en un solo lugar just talking about the drug supply challenges interdiction, alternative development eradication in, in Bolivia essentially those programs are police programs The problem to be addressed is fundamentally a law enforcement problem. Law enforcement is actually counterproductive. It makes the problem worse. It creates new drugs, new drug marketers, new drug trafficking groups, and more violence. Uh, and that's been the history. You can go back to the French Connection in the 1960s. You can go through Nixon. You can go through Carter, Ford, Bush, Clinton. Every time they tried interdiction and eradication, they made the problem worse. The ONDCP, the Office for National Drug Control Policy, depends directly on the White House and is run by the military. We assess the cost to us as a society in the United States for uh, drug addiction, consuming illicit drugs, to add up to approximately $110 billion. Now, we think we spend about $57 billion total on all illicit drugs, of which 30-some billion is just on cocaine alone. The RAND Corporation has done studies which show that it is significantly cheaper to treat treatments, uh, to carry out treatment uh, programs uh, for drug addicts than to try and interdict the supplies coming in for, from abroad. Um, I think you could find overwhelming evidence that it would make more sense. To, to do that. I mean, it's, it's outrageous that you do not have treatment on demand in this country and that 80% of addicts who want treatment can't get it. Yet we are fighting small peasant farmers in Bolivia who are, who are growing coca plants. Nosotros parecía muy bien, ¿no? El plátano, yo pensé hacer muchas cosas y mantener a mi familia con el plátano. Pero tuve muchas dificultades. Cuando corto canano, yo saco hasta la carretera, hay problemas en el transporte, ¿no? Porque yo saco en bicicleta hasta la carretera y el pasaje me sale caro. El banano que vende es solamente me alcanza para sal y para aceite, nada más. Yo durante tres años, cerca de cuatro años que estoy trabajando con banano, y recibe casi mensualmente 100 bolivianos líquidos. Y eso no me alcanza para mantener a mi familia. Much better off. Their children are learning to read and write and go to school. 
Mi mamá era muy pobre, así que no me ha hecho estudiar de leer, no he podido leer, y después eh, escribir también no puedo bien, porque no me, nadie, no había que me corregía, entonces por eso no he podido. The $100 that she and her husband Pascual managed to make every month comes from one source. No hay otro producto, no hay otro alterno, u, otra planta para, para venderle. ¿De qué vamos a ganar billetes? Hay otra cosa. De ahí nos juntan para comprar víveres. Con eso vivimos. Yo estoy sembrando porque la coca para mí significa vida. He decidido trabajar con la coca hasta las últimas consecuencias. El gobierno dice acabar con la coca. Que yo he buscado lugares estratégicos para que no me vean. Ni los helicópteros, ni el ejército, nadie ni los vecinos, así que yo, yo solo sé de mis plantas y dónde están y cómo para mantener a mi familia. No importa, no importa, porque yo siempre coca porque no hay otra alternativa. Sí pasan los helicópteros mucho, pasan todos los días, diariamente pasan por aquí volando los helicópteros, pero no lo van a ver. Resulta que ahora permiten que crezca la maleza de manera de que la coca que está mezclada con la maleza no pueda ser identificada particularmente en los reconocimientos por aire. Nosotros tenemos una misión que es erradicar. El gobierno tiene sus mecanismos para que en coordinación con otras organizaciones eh, internacionales como el ser el caso de Estados Unidos, elaboran estas estrategias y pues eh, nos las hacen ejecutar a nosotros. It has uh, frankly been, uh, from our perspective, uh, a most noteworthy success. 
uh, since the time that uh, that Bolivian administration has been in office, the uh, net production cultivation of coca in Bolivia has dramatically declined. The Bolivian military is not entirely comfortable with its rule. Officials know that forced eradication has its price. El precio es de que todos los campesinos pobres que se dedican al cultivo y a la, eh, al plantado de coca, eh, al vivir solamente de esto y luego perderlo, eh, significa un, un trauma evidente y aumenta la población de desocupados. Dios quiere que haga llover y después de lluvia, con su bendición del Dios se va a volver a vivir. We're comfortable with our successes in the Andean countries. We have a declining production capacity uh, for cocaine, coca cultivation. That's success as well. That's not United States success in that case. That's Bolivian and Peruvian success with ours and others' uh, systems. It's a virtual success. But what's happened is you've had reductions in Peru Bolivia that have been offset by increases in Colombia. So just as much coca is being produced in the Andean region. <laughs> There's a game uh, it's called uh, Whack-A-Mole, uh, where a little mole pops out of a board out of many holes, and you have to guess which one it is and whack it down with your hammer, and it pops up in another hole. And that's what we're doing with our drug uh, policy. We're chasing drugs around from one region to the next, one country to the next, and pretty soon we'll be chasing it from one country or one continent to the next.
En los 80, por ejemplo, cuando no había mucha presencia guerrillera en el Caguán, por ejemplo, era la ley del más fuerte prácticamente. Como no había quien controlara nada, todo el mundo cargaba un arma. Todo el mundo cargaba, no dicho andaba en pistolas, como se dice, ¿sí? entrando más. Se metían a las cantinas, tomaban, peleaban y no peleaban a machete, era a puros tiros. ¿Sí? Era tanto el problema que hasta los guerrilleros en ocasiones le tiraban. Le tiraban a los guerrilleros. But the guerrillas of the park, the revolutionary armed forces of the set down strong roots in the region. The park was born from an armed peasant self-defense movement and is now the oldest left-wing guerrilla movement in Latin America. El gobierno en esta zona nunca ha invertido. Nunca, porque como no le interesa esta zona, pues la FARC ¿sí? se ha puesto al frente de eso. Y hoy en día se ha controlado un ciento por ciento. The FARC established political, military, and social control over an enormous area where its guerrillas are building an extensive network of highways. For the colonizers in these territories abandoned by the state, growing coca became an excellent alternative for survival, especially because of good prices after the eradication of Peru and Bolivia. The FARC, in keeping with its puritanical revolutionary spirit, tried to prohibit coca growth, but soon had to reconsider. We have said that no siembren coca. Destruyan esas matas de coca. Y nos responden, ¿y ustedes las FARC nos van a sostener entonces a nosotros? Si ustedes las FARC nos sostienen a nosotros y a nuestra familia, nosotros arrancamos esas hojas. Si mandan la guerrilla, manda mal. Y si el Estado quisiera mandar, no tiene instrumentos para mandar, porque no está presente. Entonces hay que ir a 300 kilómetros, que es la ciudad capital, Florencia. La guerrilla pone trabas y trampas, reglamentos para que no entren gente sospechosa que puedan crear problemas. Es el otro estado, el otro estado que asumió el privilegio, ¿no? el predominio en el territorio, porque el estado estuvo ausente desde hace muchos años. La guerrilla manda en lo que es la economía siendo la economía prevalente en el territorio la coca entonces controla todo lo que es el cultivo y manejo de la coca It's this fact that makes the US government insist the FARC are now narco guerrillas No es cierto que eso sea el, de la guerrilla de la FARC sino que la gente tuvo que asumir esa, esa forma de subsistir porque no tiene más de qué vivir por eso nosotros insistimos con mucha fuerza que los campesinos no son narcotraficantes, sino trabajadores de la tierra abandonados por el Estado. But the FARC admit they do profit from the business in the regions under their control. Las FARC cobran un impuesto a los ganaderos o los caficultores, a los productores de ajonjolí, de soya, de plátano, y también cobra impuesto a los compradores de coca. Farmers from all over the 
Shopping is done, and Roberto and his companion return home. Roberto lives with his family in the middle of the summer in a run-down house without electricity or drinking water. They came here after fleeing the violence in the region in which he grew up. Ago, and Roberto and Omar burned down several hectares of virgin jungle to grow coca. The crop grows quickly and can be harvested three or four times a year. This is later bought by the buyers from the Coca Mafia, who take it to sophisticated chemical labs where it will be crystallized into pure cocaine. With this harvest alone, El Alberto and Omar produce 200 grams of coca paste. Esto da para vivir más o menos un mes. Se compra una remesa que alcanza para un mes. Bien tasadito, se pagan los gastos de ahí y se compra una remesa que alcanza para un mes. Esta es la gran miseria que nosotros estamos sacando. Si hubiera forma de, de otros productos, serían mejor otros productos, no estos. O sea, vemos que esto hace un gran perjuicio, es un gran daño. Se disputan los dineros, las riquezas, se roban, se, se descoyunturan matrimonios, se disorrean familias. Crece la, la juventud, crece en medio de la coca cuando no hay otro conocimiento y después toma una terminación. Como el para la guerrilla, como el para el ejército. And your backdoor and his neighbors didn't come to the region to grow coca. They used to grow illegal crops. That was until 1998, when the helicopters and fumigation planes flew over. Vineo las fumigas, las avionetas fumigando, cruzaron de ese lado, como pueden mirar, allá no hay coca, no hay nada. ¿Ya? Vinieron, y aquí habían mil peces. Se envenenaron. Este es lo que es un cultivo de cacao, como podemos apreciar aquí, ya que ustedes vinieron, por las fumigas. Esto lo acaban todo, destruyeron esto, como vemos. Estas pepas acabadas, esto no sirve para nada, una cosecha que acabó. Por las fumigas, no tan solo esto, aquí se fumigó plátano, se fumigó cultivos de piña, cultivos de arasá, árboles para reforestar, todo se acabó. Entonces, ¿qué podemos esperar nosotros? Las consecuencias de las fumigaciones son, son desastrosas, lo hacen con mucho afán. No importa fumigar también maíz, potreros, praderas, lagos, lagunas, peces, animales. Despite all the 
fumigation in recent years, the amount of coal detectors has tripled. When fumigation takes place, there's a shortage of coca. Prices rise, and the peasants are tempted to grow more coca because of the high returns. For each fumigated hectare of coca, peasants burn down three or four hectares of rainforest for new crops. In this way, fumigation leads to the destruction of thousands of square kilometers of Amazon rainforest. Fue el resultado de pasar en las avionetas y me humillaron lo que es la casa, platanera, yutera, y una, una maicera y un arroz, un arrozal. Y a causa de eso, al rato, o sea, me murió una niña a causa de la humillación. Le cayó veneno y ahí mismo me metí, empezó con vómito y soltó el estómago y falleció. Pasaron dos avionetas y me humillaron a, por allá a las 10 de la mañana. Y yo no estaba, estaba puro la mujer y me quedaron con casa y todo. Y, y enseguida la niña se intoxicó, tanto muerta la niña, de 17 meses. ¿no? Pasaron la avioneta y enseguida pues se agarró y se murió. Con ese veneno se intoxicó y, y eso murió. De intensificarse las humillaciones en todas esas áreas, pues en primer lugar van a ver los combates con las FARC, eh, contra los aviones, contra los helicópteros que van a fumigar. En la medida que esos campesinos se han reprimido con las fumigaciones, pues estos campesinos van a ver eh, en las FARC su apoyo, van a encontrar en las FARC su aliado. Reciban un caluroso y revolucionario saludo de parte de las Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia. Frente 14. Son ustedes los más afectados prácticamente de la guerra y no están en ella. El Estado ha tenido abandonada la zona del Caguán. Nosotros solamente reclamamos lo que ustedes necesitan. Es eso. Nosotros reclamamos porque no hay garantías, no hay garantías de vida. ¿Qué preferirían ustedes, aguantar o esperar una invasión yanqui? Aguantar, ¿cierto? The war on drugs is a sensitive issue for American politicians. I want something to happen. I'm tired of reading about the kids in the streets of America dying from this poison. I mean, we can't get 10 stinking helicopters to Colombia. No one wants to look soft on drugs. Uh, this is the most common fear among uh, politicians. They're afraid. They're afraid of being attacked by their challengers. Uh, Congressman so-and-so is soft on drugs. Vote for me. I will protect your children from drugs. Uh, it would be similar to coming up to a river where the babies are drowning, and you're busy pulling these babies out like crazy trying to save their life. And somebody says, I wonder how the babies are getting in here. I wonder what's happening upriver. Well, Columbia is the source at the river. It's coming from Colombia. Most of them uh, couldn't find places like Colombia on a map, uh, but they hear from um, people uh, in the DEA or General uh, McCaffrey, the drug czar's office, or a few members of Congress who uh, taken a quick trip down there, for instance, and they'll come back and say, oh, we have a terrible crisis on our hands. The drug situation has gotten out of control. We have to act promptly. We have to send money and guns and helicopters. Over the last 15 years, the U.S. government has spent over $30 billion on international drug control efforts alone, not to mention the hundreds of billions that have been spent here at home. Yet there's absolutely no evidence that any fewer drugs are coming into this country than before. First of all, you have a bureaucratic labyrinth here in Washington. You have over 50 federal agencies all involved in one way or another in the U.S. war on drugs in Latin America. There are tremendous rivalries between the DEA, the CIA, and the DIA in particular. And, and do you often find conflict? I'm a naval intelligence officer assigned to 
Joint Task Force 6, which is the primary U.S. military command assigned to work with federal, state, and local law enforcement in the prosecution of the war on drugs. Most of JTF-6 activities is really limited to the continental United States, but the um, intelligence effort, of course, is worldwide, at home and overseas. I can talk about any specific uh, activities or, or projects that uh, I may have worked on. Lieutenant Commander Sylvester Salcedo entered the U.S. Navy in 1980 as a young officer. He took part in several naval exercises throughout Latin America. Later in the 1990s, the Military Intelligence Service mobilized him for the war on drugs. I mean, I went through a, a personal conflict within my own personal career in the Navy. On the one hand, you know, I wanted, I had this own personal ambition to fulfill, to, to prove myself as a good naval officer. Yet, at, at the same time, I, I was facing a, a so-called war that uh, I did not fully believe in. The war on drugs in Colombia produced his first doubts. When you carry out, say, air fumigation, I mean, an airplane just, just goes across a, a mountainside and, and, and spraying, with the intention of spraying to destroy certain uh, 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 drug producing plants, children who may live in, in a certain village, or even the villagers, the adults themselves, are affected negatively by some of the, say, accidental, mistaken uh, uh, fumigation efforts. In 1999, Salcedo met community workers who showed him that the war on drugs also had its consequences at home. There is almost a war against the poor, and, and that went to Rikers Island, which is a prison, and there were hundreds of mothers and children visiting their, their men in prison, and I thought every one of those represents a family that's, that's disrupted, and those men in prison uh, most of them are there because of drugs, and most that happened because they couldn't find work, or uh, they became addicted because there wasn't there weren't other wholesome activities. Oh, we have yeah. failed utterly in, in doing something about the drug problem. Well, okay, actually, they're going to let us choose what we I spent 15 years of my life in jail because of drugs. There's two million people in jail in the United States right now, probably 90 percent drug related. But the people that they're putting in jail for drugs are only small amounts of drugs. As you know, since, 19, since 1968, when Richard Nixon declared his war on drugs, that was 32 years ago. There's more drugs today than there ever was before. There's more people in jail than there ever was before. And drugs does more damage than it ever has before. You are the guys who, in my work as a naval intelligence officer, I'm the guy who was hunting you guys down. And in this war on drugs, you know, I'm supposed to be the good guy, and you guys are supposed to be the bad guys. And I'm supposed to be, you know, all my work is dedicated towards locking you people up in jail. And I'm saying this is really crazy. This is really a war against ourselves. From my experience as, as a naval intelligence officer and, and of what I know within the, the American intelligence community and their effort to assist in the war on drugs, I just think uh, we are wasting our time because of the attempt at crop eradication and interdiction efforts. Uh, the, the goal is to uh, capture the, the top level of, of the drug trade, but again there, what tends to happen is the, the people who tend to suffer or become the, the enemy are, let's say, the, the poor peasant farmers who are just uh, trying to make a living. With this in mind, Salcedo decided to abandon the war on drugs. Mr. President, I am returning the Enclosed Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal to you in protest of your administration's current national drug policy. In my opinion, narcotics use and abuse are our problem here at home. The solutions should be applied here and not in Colombia or elsewhere. To spend this additional amount of money overseas is wasteful and counterproductive. I implore you to call for an end of the war drugs. <laughs>
producto blanco sale un demonio. Estoy pagando condena en el abandono. Este producto blanco sale un demonio. Estoy pagando condena I think many things uh, at different times have gone wrong. Um, sometimes the, the development, the project um, planning itself has, has been deficient. Crops have been promoted without uh, really uh, guarantees of, uh, of markets. James Jones now lives in Washington, D.C. as a retired United Nations drug control expert. In Bolivia, he was coordinator for alternative development projects of UNDCP, the United Nations Drug Control Program. Many of those projects ended as discarded and rusty remains of failure. But eradication goes on. This incentive takes the form of forced eradication. This is not good. You create a, a great deal of unrest, and, and, and what is the potential uh, uh, for that unrest uh, to be disruptive, uh, uh, or, or in the worst of uh, cases, to take the form of an insurgency? <laughs> is the war on drugs. For common Colombians, the main issue is the almost 40-year-old civil war between the government and the real army, the one unable to defeat the other. Because this hopeless war had reached a stalemate, the Colombian government and the guerrillas agreed to start peace negotiations. Negotiators from both sides meet frequently for talks, and they express optimism. Estamos hablando con ellos porque consideramos que tienen unos planteamientos políticos y que no es una narcoguerrilla. Hace dos años nadie se imaginaba que hubiéramos podido eh, crear la interlocución con la guerrilla y hoy estamos dialogando. But the peace talks with the guerrillas are regarded with a distrustful eye by the main proponents of the war on drugs. I believe that it is a highly technical argument to say that at present they are not terrorists. I believe that, that their future power is dependent on the funding coming from drugs. And they're clearly terrorists. Nosotros lo que consideramos y solicitamos con mucha fuerza es que se le permita a los colombianos resolver su problema interno a su manera, sin ningún tipo de presiones. The peace process is not working. I don't, I don't care about the peace process in Colombia. I just don't care. I don't care. The U.S. Congress decided to intensify the war on drugs in Colombia with more military means, only opposed by a small minority. I think that we are beginning on a path that doesn't have a clear end game here. We, when I've asked repeatedly at hearings, how do we know when we've won? When do we get out? What happens when helicopters get shot down? The part that I'm concerned about is helicopters going in and spraying and um, helping to kill even more people there, um, a strategy that has not worked so far. what's affected in this war, they say. Uh, we know that treatment works, that we must reduce demand in the United States. It is absolutely insane that we we're, are, are willing to consider a billion dollars of military aid, but we're not willing to give the, even a fraction of that amount of money to drug treatment in the United States.
que erradiquemos no con veneno, que la sustituyamos por cultivos lícitos, que haya apoyo, así terminamos la guerra. Estamos hartos de ella, aunque no estamos peleando a tiros, pero estamos en el medio de ella. No sabemos quién es.